married one or 20 plus years, at some point, you realized you were married into crazy. And that's what our podcast is all about. We offer love, laughter, and a dose of reality as we unpack this crazy thing called marriage. So sit back, relax, and get your ear hustle on. It's time to start the conversation. All right, let's go. What's going on, y'all? This is DeAndre Williams. I just wanted to give a quick testimony about the services that I've been receiving from Ernie Kaysen and Married Into Crazy. Um, it's amazing. Um, they uh, provide everything I need and it's helped me transition to another level in my business. So if you're out there, reach out to Ernie Kaysen and Married Into Crazy and they will provide great service. Welcome to episode 122 of the Married Into Crazy <laughs> podcast with Snooks and Lovey. I'm Lovey. I'm Snooks. And as always, we, we always welcome you back, but this is a little different. Welcome back to a new year. Right. This is a special occasion. It's a new year, first of all. And it's actually, actually, it's a new year for us too. It's a new year of marriage because... Today is our actual anniversary. 24 years of wedded bliss. I'm lying. I know you are. That's why I was looking at you. I know you're shame. Look, we try and keep it real. The second letter in crazy is R, which always for us stands out for real. So mm-hmm. we're going to keep it real. Um, again, crazy stands for compassionate, real, accountable, zealous, and, and yielding. yielding. We always say yielding together, at least try to, because it's important that both of us yield. Sometimes Levy doesn't remember what the why is for. I don't. I don't, I don't yield well, but I am learning. No, it's, it's, it's always, not, a, that's not true. Lovey is a very good yielder. You, I, you are. I you think every it. relationship is under construction. There's no such thing as mm-hmm. we've arrived when right. it comes to marriages. There may be moments, but not necessarily a destination. Some aha moments. Yeah, some, yeah. Well, you call them what you want. I'm asking, you said moments. So I'm like, is it aha moments? Like, like, yeah, usually it's aha. I should not have said that. Oh, you feel like that? Oh, heck yeah. What have you felt like that about? Uh, you, you Okay, so now you're going to do a checklist and no, accounting just, of the I'm last 24 years. I'm trying to think years. of, like, because you said heck yeah. Like, you was like, heck yeah, I should have never said that. Look, w- l- listen, folks, when you're married to somebody that remembers every single detail of every moment in the history of time, <laughs> there are going to be aha moments where you sit there and be like, you regret what you said because... <laughs> Because I'm going to remember, remember it. Whatever. The other, day, the other day, I had a post where I talked about, we were talking, oh, the night, last night, we were, I made a post yesterday about how you you were talking about the night before our wedding, 24 um, years ago, and you were spitting out details and stuff. I'm like, don't you remember? And da, da, da. I'm like, I, I do not remember that day. I don't remember that moment. I, I don't remember anything. I don't remember our rehearsal dinner. I don't remember anything at all i think because you were talking about your bachelor quote unquote well, bachelor that, party okay. or whatever so that's the lack of with maybe sadness oh i had the most boring... you want to redo it no but it's you <laughs> know what, a, re- it, over, a redo okay so here's what this is what's horrible the i don't know if it was horrible or not but my bachelor party i've thrown bachelor parties for people that were absolutely wrong like my best friend's bachelor party was the the most sinful, <laughs> worst thing ever, which is what bachelor parties are supposed to be. Really? You're supposed to sin at the bachelor party? No, no for everyone else. Okay. Not the best wondering. man and, uh, and the guy getting married. Okay. But for, so for my bachelor party, I didn't want anything. We went to the movies. We went I was going to say, so did you go to the movies or did you go to a game? We, no, the way I remember it is we went to the movies and we went and had something to eat and that was pretty much it. It was chill. I, at the time, I wasn't even drinking. I didn't even drink that night. And so it, it was me, Anthony... I think Raj and Rod. And Rod had a friend that went too, I think. I don't even remember. I, I remember you said something about Rod's friend came or something like but that. But it was just chill because I just, but I, I didn't want anything. I, to be honest with you, I didn't even want a bachelor party. Well, I didn't have a bachelorette party. I had a bridal shower um, like two weeks before. See, folks are out there like, huh? <laughs> yeah, so aw. sad. That's so sad. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't have a bachelorette party. Um, 
yeah I, well anyway they're like y'all was squares even back then no we had there was so much other stuff going on you gotta realize we had so much drama it was so much going on because even after the bride uh, the bridal shower there was more follow-up drama that came so it's like we were exhausted <laughs> there was absolutely no energy for any of uh, 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 there was no room for Sodom and Gomorrah because we had absolute chaos. We had the apocalypse happening like every other day when it came to our relationship. So here's then. here's what I feel like. I feel like um, we need a do over of our, our of our wedding, and I get to have a bachelorette party. Did you do that? I don't know. Like twenty five well, year party. anniversary, and then oh, a party. Yeah, you can't have a bachelor party though because you had one. Technically, I did not go on to you, you claimed go. it, you named mm. it Bachelor Party, right? You just said it right now. My bachelor party was so you already we got just that. Called it that. Well, you still got it. I you didn't know, get a bachelor. The exact same thing today. <laughs> you know what that's called? <laughs> fellas hanging out. Fellas just, just well, go, you can do that. It's called going to the movies. Whatever. You can't even do that now. It's, it's COVID. You can't even do can't even recreate any of that. Anyway. So yeah, it was funny last night. Um, we were talking about where we were 24 years ago. We had our uh, bachelor, not bachelor. What am I saying? See, we had go. our our um, was rehearsal dinner. Uh -oh. It wasn't really like a rehearsal dinner. <laughs> it was at hometown, hometown buffet. buffet. <laughs> it was at hometown buffet. It wasn't everybody in the bridal shower didn't go. There was like five of us, I think, that was there. We were pathetic. Yeah. When you look back, I almost want to cry for us. Dang. Dang. How do we make it 24 years? Wow. That was so crazy. It was nothing like, um, you know, everybody else that I know had bachelorette parties and, you know, formal um, rehearsal dinner and all that. And it was a big to do and you got dressed up and all that. And I remember just going to. We went to a buffet. We went. <laughs> <laughs> hometown buffet it was even golden corral hey. but golden corral wasn't around then i don't think but anyway and it was on the hood side of town too where we yeah. live where we grew up well and i remember after after i ate after we ate we said goodbye i went to my mom's house and my mom was there and um keisha came my aunt two of my aunts came from out of town they were there <laughs> dad was there and i slept on the couch and i just remember um just kind of laying there like I'm getting married tomorrow. And it was a kind of a, like a surreal type of type of feeling. And I remember I woke up and my mom comes out. I had, cause I had to go get my hair done. And she was looking and she was like, you getting married, you know? And I was like, yeah, you know, I almost want to cry right now because I, I never, How I didn't feel was? well, kind of, yeah, I, honestly, yeah, kind of. Just thinking because. About, what was I doing? I was, I was at Sixty Fourth Avenue. I was. I was. <laughs> you said who? Who stayed? At I don't even house? know. I don't remember who stayed the night, but I know the I next morning. Raj. I think Raj might have stayed or came over that early, early morning. Mm -hmm. But I know Anthony came over. My cousin, who's my best man, and then uh, Michael and Andre. Did you guys get dressed there? Yeah, I know we, you got dressed. Yeah, there, we got dressed at the house. And did they all get dressed there too? I don't or? remember. Somebody, I'm, I'm sure there was other fellows getting dressed, but it was pretty pathetic. Yeah, I had to, um, got my hair done. After I got my hair done, I had to go to where we had the reception at because of the, I got a call. Um, they did some seating wrong or something. And so they were like, well, we could change it afterwards because they covered the dance floor. That's what they did. I was like, no, we specifically said dance floor. And so they had to rearrange some things and they didn't do it exactly at that point, but they were going to do it before we got there. And I had to make sure that the centerpieces were exactly like how I wanted. Why do you do that? You know, when I tell a story, I'm going to tell it. I'm just saying. 24 years later. For those of you that still are still listening. Wow. Okay. It's no. all yours. Mm -mm. I'm not talking anymore. <laughs> no, okay. Look, here's the reason why we're saying all of this. Oh, there's reason. 24 years of marriage that we're celebrating right now. And from auspicious beginnings, from the very beginning, getting stabbed, family at war, people boycotting our marriage. No, our families were not at war. Your family, family was, was at, at war. war. Thank you. People boycotting our, our marriage or threatening to boycott. On top of that, uh, 
no bachelorette party. I don't know what you would call what we did. <laughs> and, you know, and, and then the, the flooring, the, the, the people getting everything mixed up. Oh, as a matter of fact, do you remember that our names are supposed to be on the marquee of oh, the hotel? Yeah, and so they our names there. are supposed to be on the marquee of the, all the stuff we pay for. And we tripped because we paid for it. There was no, no families, you know, paying for anything. This is all us. Well, my mom paid for my dress and stuff. Well, yeah, but there was supposed to be our names in the marquee, you know, congratulations, Mr. Mm -hmm. and Mrs. Kaysen. No, nothing. nothing, nada. It was like, welcome to the whatever hotel that doesn't even exist anymore. It's, <laughs> it's changed ownership like 17 times since then. And all this stuff went wrong. I mean, we're talking so wrong. Everything went wrong. And here we are 24 years later and people are asking, how did you do it? You can't let these other little, these, these massive things, there's so many things that are going to go wrong. There's so many things that are going to go right, but you can't focus on the negative. Well, you say massive things. I mean, in the retrospect is really not that massive at the time it was because we were proud that we got married and, you know, we, people were coming and to the reception and you, our name and <laughs> some lights of us were proud or, that people were coming to the reception, <laughs> our name and lights and, and everything. And it was just so crazy. And even, do you remember when we got there? So when they introduced the wedding party, I don't know what the heck <laughs> my uncle was doing, but they ended, we're lining up for the wedding party. And usually the DJ introduces the wedding party. My uncle, who is our pastor, he was like, he calls us in there. He was like, Mr. and Mrs. Kaysen, come on in, come on in. And we're like, what the heck? And the DJ- Not following any of the protocol, all the- The stuff DJ was up. over and he was just like, okay. So then we come in, everyone's clapping and stuff. And then, then the DJ does his thing, introduces the wedding party. And then he reintroduces us, but we're already standing in there. And I was so like, backwards. oh, my oh wait, let's take, let's take it a step back. Go back to the wedding. So it, so when we actually planned out the wedding, I say we loosely, when Snooks pl planned out the wedding with my Aunt Sheila, and God bless her, rest her soul, um, there were certain things that were supposed to transpire, like, you know, the, the order of, um, what do you call it? The order of ceremony. Order of ceremony. And Service. all I asked for was there was this one song. I have to look it up. I don't remember what it is now. I always forget. There was one <laughs> song. That's all I requested was that when we were leaving, there was a song by Johnny Gill. I remember it was by JG and I, cause I, I, I was a huge was, and I still remember. am a, a massive, I'm a huge new edition fan. Um, we were just talking about this and there was a Johnny Gill song that was so appropriate for us to, to walk, to leave on. They didn't play it. And the guy. They didn't play. <laughs> we were standing there because we jumped the broom. After we jumped the broom, we're standing there. We're waiting for the music to come. <laughs> Lovey was so mad. I was just like, come on, let's just go. He's like, no, where's he at? <laughs> He's looking around. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> DJ dude was supposed to be in the booth. You know, the nobody furniture. knew that, you know, it was wrong, but the only we were the ones that know obviously we're the ones that matters, but you know, it was just that we only stood there. It's not like we were standing there for five minutes, but we stood there after we after we jumped the broom, we were holding hands, we kissed again. And so we we're like waiting for the music to come. Mm. And it didn't. And I was just like, okay, you know, everyone's still clapping and stuff. And Lovey was so mad. He's like, I cannot believe this. <laughs> that was so funny. And then when we left, so you drove there, right? Mm -hmm. there was no limo there, <laughs> but I don't know I just thought about this yesterday it was so funny because when we get ready to leave someone's like who's taking you guys to the who's driving you guys to the uh reception I was like huh <laughs> or it's like we're driving ourselves and then your cousin was like no I'm driving you guys so we rolled in the back of Lovey's car it was the ultimate <laughs> It was so funny. I mean, we didn't trip off. Of, I didn't trip off of that. I didn't think anything about it. But years after, you know, after going to all these different weddings and stuff, I started like, oh, we did that wrong. Oh, that's we should have did that, you know. But when it's, <laughs> it's all so funny. said and done, so many of our family members 
from the outside looking in we're like oh it was the most beautiful, so beautiful. Way. it was so because nah, 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 nah. i mean mm. you, you have to realize that there were some parts of it that were just absolutely amazing um snooks is blessed immensely blessed with a family i'm like that I is that married you obviously does well, of course that that goes without <laughs> that saying part, yeah that's the subtitle of all this Whatever. no but no you're you're you are you're immensely blessed your family was blessed with some people that have amazing voices oh that sing yeah aunt Teresa um sang and she was amazing even though mm -hmm. she forgot some lyrics she messed that up a little bit and she was mad and blamed it on Daniel who was the piano player but Ebony sang Ebony oh my god Ebony my sister was like my stepsister we were like where them pipes come from now, I heard her she sang in a car for me and I was like this girl Girl, she can blow sing for real for real Ebony not playing can blow. but for real for real sing she should have got signed a long time ago but and anyway then the boys remember they sing the, the lord's cousins, prayer yep, yep. and Malachi one of them was Trent sick and... mal trent michael and elton and byron byron, yep, byron too yep. yeah so it was it was in that context it was very beautiful and then there was um our my cousin Bianca, Bianca, she Dr. Roberts, Dr. Roberts, she brought the broom in. And when she brought the broom in, she danced um, to the song called mm -hmm. Bride or Groom. There was a presentation that she yeah. did that was and it was amazing. so beautiful. So we had that she danced and laid the broom down for us and danced away and we jumped the broom and then we didn't we walked without the music that I had selected? Well, yeah, where everyone was clapping and stuff too. It was okay. Nobody knew. But then, oh, this part of the reception. Oh, yeah. Happy birthday, Tanisha. <laughs> so, so we get to the reception. His little cousin turned 18. Why did they try to make it a birthday party? I was like, I know y'all don't like me, but are you serious? That's disrespectful uh, right now. They, I mean, they... <laughs> They got lit. I mean, oh my God, 18th they birthday. They turned it out. So she celebrated her 18th birthday at, at our, our wedding. We didn't know. So we didn't know it was like a double party. So I was like, what the heck? Tanisha and acted. Oh a full. my gosh. And so later, what was that? It was like five years ago or something. We had a little get together with the cousins. And she was like, yeah, girl, because Bubba, I said, Tanisha, I'm still salty about that. And she died laughing. She died laughing. But I mean, you know, that was just fuel. For basically the, it's, it's rest you know, of the fire it, it should have said so that that venue and the hotel where it was supposed to say you know welcome mr and mrs Kaysen or congratulations on the Kaysen's wedding party or anything like that it probably should have said murphy's law wedding here <laughs> anything so that funny. can go wrong will go wrong it's so funny it's so funny but you know what we had we had well besides the other drama once we we kind of had to put that out of our heads and we had a oh, good there's time. More. Oh, there's more, but we're not saying it yeah. all. <laughs> we had a good time. My mom, my grandma. I remember my grandmother was dancing. My <laughs> Wait, I just got to say this part. Okay. I'm going to say it. Anybody else out there got like wedding pictures of key people missing from the wedding? I've got multiple people from my side of the family <laughs> that were still salty about me getting stabbed and all that and wanted a boycott, but they still came. And before we ended up having our, our pictures, they left before we did anything they bounced and the ones that were there i won't say the ones some that were there you know it looked like it was like hatfields and the mccoys not a smile nothing it was crazy yeah they it were was looking a little pissed off but what was interesting though was that the people that i didn't anticipate getting support from or i would have never thought that that's where support would come from it came from mm -hmm. it, it, i think it's a testament to you just really know who is really in your corner until stuff really hits the fan and people are there regardless of the consequences they stand behind you well, and prop you up it's like who's there for you not for them you know what i'm saying right. it wasn't about this person's feelings or it wasn't about well this is how i'm feeling it was it was they were there to support us and they made that very clear they were even there tanisha to, so, yeah, <laughs> as she was drinking in the back no but they were there to support us regardless of what happened um eight months ago or what right. have you you know we went we got married and they were like we're here for your wedding this is your day and whatever everyone else is thinking that is about them it's not about them it's about you guys and that's what we're here for we're here to, for support and don't worry about you know who left? Don't worry about who didn't come. Don't worry about whose feelings are hurt because this is your wedding. 
And it's, and again, we bring all this up because we always try and tell a story that's entertaining or unfortunately very true. And sad. <laughs> but it's, it's, okay, what does this mean to you? How can you take these nuggets, these things that have had, transpired in our life and apply it to what you may or may not be going through or people that you know? And when it's all said and done, it's like things are going to go right, things are going to go wrong. And you have to understand that it doesn't matter. What matters is how you respond to it. Yeah, it, it, and that's exactly true. How you respond to it is always going to determine how you get through it. You know, one thing that um, I for a long time after after our wedding, even though it wasn't Lovey's fault of what happened, I still held like a bit of a grudge against him because of how some key members in his family acted and. He couldn't change that, you know, and, and, you know, we, we talk a lot about, like we say, the C starts with compassion and it wasn't until four years later that when we went through our, we're going to get divorced and we're whatever I was, I went through my little thing. It wasn't until I, I learned to have compassion that I said, okay, let's, let's be, um, let me be real. Let me be accountable. Let me all that. That's where crazy was actually developed we didn't really spell it out in a way of like okay this is crazy but thinking back on my heart I started thinking with my heart not so much my mind you know one thing about commitment because we were committed but commitment means (laughs) not being comfortable all the time I, I had to stay committed we always say you know what Inky said, stay committed to the process Mm -hmm. without being emotionally tied to the outcome. Exactly. So, but what I had to learn was that my commitment to my marriage had to have more, um, was more uh, important than what my personal comfort was, my personal comfort level. Because if you knew me before, you know, I was one of those kind of not like I was a ghetto broad or nothing like that, but I wasn't no pushover type of person. You push me, I'll push you back. You know, like, like my brother likes to say, I get down where I get mad at, (laughs) but I had to learn that I could not hold a grudge against you for what someone else did. It wasn't like you, they did it in your stead just because they were related to you. That, that wasn't your fault. Right. So So in your relationship, as you roll into this new year, are you holding your spouse or your loved one accountable for (laughs) something that they had absolutely no control over? And it's funny you say holding them accountable, but really, are you holding them hostage? Mm, Come on. Because that's what it, you're holding me here against my will. I didn't, I didn't ask for this. I didn't, you know, I didn't do it. When you, accountability is, you know, these are the things that you said you were going to do. So make sure that you do them. That's I'm holding you accountable to what you said. I'm holding you hostage to something that I was holding you hostage, something that you had no control over. You didn't ask for that to happen. That was a byproduct of something that I felt guilty about, you know, because of what happened to you by and they held me hostage for what happened to you. True. You know, so at the time I didn't see it like that. All I could do was see my innocence like I'm the innocent person thrown in prison. Why are you blaming me for what happened? Let's hold the person that did it accountable. It's interesting you bring up compassion because uh, just uh, yesterday. Because it? it's crazy. No, I'm like, no it's just, it's funny. It's, it's, it's an interesting tie-in because mm-hmm. compassion is the first letter of crazy. But the other day in Clubhouse, I recently joined Clubhouse and had the opportunity to sit in on um, several rooms the other day. And there's a, there's a brother out there that owns a company by the name of uh, Eric Harrison. Um, and his company is called Express Your Perspective. Mm-hmm. Phenomenal brother out of Houston that is doing huge things for the community. He's an author. He's a speaker. He's, he's a, a demanded speaker across um, the U.S., quite honestly. And he's, been, he's done stuff in Vegas. He's done stuff in Houston. Is he a filmmaker also? Yeah, he's a filmmaker. Yeah. He did a documentary yeah, that was on cracks. there. And we've mentioned Eric in the past because we followed his work. But he happened to be in this room. And... We were there were some people that had some challenges that were discussing um, things that they've gone through in their lives. And one thing that Eric brought up, and I was able to chime in a little bit later, but one thing he brought up was compassion. He says people have so much passion for the things they love, the things that they're excited about. And sometimes passion can create things, but it's very selfish. Passion is a very 
selfish thing. It's what I'm, it's what I'm excited about, what I have fire for. Mm -hmm. And it was saying that compassion, that prefix is about having that same amount of zeal, but for the outcome for other individuals mm -hmm. to really be that excited for someone else mm -hmm. to be selfless. Mm -hmm. And we need to be more compassionate in our relationships because we need to be just as excited. We have to be more excited for the outcome for our spouse or for our loved one, our significant other than we are for ourselves, putting them before us. And in an odd sort of way, without even knowing what we were doing to a certain extent, I think that's what we did. That's, I think that's where our success came is that even back then, when we were still trying to figure out who we were, how we fit together, all that, even though we know we loved each other, we wanted to be with each other, we still put each other first to a certain extent. We looked past as much as the damage was being caused by our fan, well, my family, I keep saying our, but really more, more so <laughs> my family. Because uh, man, I got stories that we have not even told. Like, Things just keep coming in my mind. Like, oh man, I can't believe that happened. That should have been in a movie. <laughs> and man, I, I, there's one I want to tell, but it has no relevance whatsoever, but it's so on top of my mind right now. But with all that happening, you still loved me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, most people would have walked away, quite honestly, from what had transpired. Most people would have walked away from when I got stabbed, but from my perspective. I was about to say, well, I mean, there were... We both had opportunity. We both had cause by traditional societal measures to walk away from the relationship. And I, I think that you have to be willing to put in the work. And those were, some of those things were little, some of those things were big, but I think that really matters is commitment to the details, to the small things. Because at the end of the day, we still loved each other. No, I didn't have my song. No, the, you know, the setup was wrong. No, our names weren't on the marquee. No, our names were not on the marquee. I'm still salty. <laughs> it's under new management. I should go back there and cuss the people out. Whatever. And Let's say we just in do, a Christian way. We have a do-over. <laughs> we'll just do a do-over. We'll do a do-over. Next year, you're going to get your 25-year anniversary party. Mine or the girls? What? No, 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 no. So let's, let's, let's stay on task. Okay. <laughs> But no, so look at the Grand Canyon, as amazing as it is. People look at marriages when, when like in Clubhouse, when I had mentioned, oh, I married 24 years, everyone's like, oh my God, that's fantastic. You know, but there was another cat in there that had been married 32 years. Mm -hmm. And we're like, oh my God, that's amazing. You look at these, these, these things and people look at it and they're like, oh, that's so awesome. It's so majestic. It's so amazing. They say the same thing about like the Grand Canyon. It's beautiful. It's awe-inspiring. It's just, it's one of the seven wonders of the world, I believe. And- awesome. But it didn't happen overnight. It wasn't one major event that made it amazing. Mm -hmm. It was water over a very, 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 very long period of time that wore away the rock and the lime and the different minerals in order to really carve out the Grand Canyon. And it's the, it's the, it's the consistency of the water that was there. And I think it's in our relationships, the consistency, the little things, doing the little things over and over and over again. That's why we place so much emphasis at the end of every podcast on the I can't can for couples. And this isn't a plug for it, but it's just that we recognized early that it's the little, little, little things done consistently over time that creates something beautiful, like a 24 year or 25 year or a 30 year marriage. When you talk to the old heads that have been married for a very long time. There's certain big things that they were committed to, but honestly, a lot of it comes down to the little tiny things that are done consistently day after day. So I'm going to come from a different perspective as far as um, with the, the longevity. Speaking to the mic. I am speaking to, is okay. right here Go for on my mouth anyway. <laughs> but here, here's, here's, here's my thing too when we talk about longevity and we talk about staying married and stuff and, you know, don't just stay in it just to stay in it also. True. Because I know people that are married and they're miserable. You know, we applaud the 20 year, 15 year, um, 40 year, whatever. And I know someone who's been married for a very long time and much of the time that they've been married they've been miserable, but you get stuck in that rut and you stay there. You know, I just bring that up just because of how blessed that we are. We've been married for 24 years. And though we've had, you know, ups and downs as much as I love you. And I cannot tell you 
how much I love lovey. Oh my gosh. I love my husband. But there are times where I'm like, if he does not leave this room, I'm going to elbow him. <laughs> so today's a 24 year anniversary. She, she made breakfast for me in bed and then I come downstairs and I'm, I'm playing with it a little bit. I got her nerves just like that. I was like, let me move. <laughs> she, she was like, okay, I don't like you right now. She went from making food and love and done and da, 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 and all of a sudden I was like, get out of my face. I didn't say it no, like that, but didn't. I'm like, okay, move. But anyway, I felt that vibe. You felt that vibe. Yeah. Uh, good. No, but I mean, I feel like we're very fortunate because we've been married for 24 years and the majority of the time that we've been married, we have been in love with each other. And it's just been, this is my best friend. We talk, we communicate, we do things together. It's never, um, I'd say 19 of the 24 were probably what it bliss. Yeah. And I'd say the other five were learning was a roller coaster. Yeah. And we were, and, and, and those needed to happen though, you know, and, and that's another thing too. When the going gets tough, even though I tried to get going, um, a lot <laughs> of times people just, okay, I can't, I got to go. I'm, I'm not saying that, Oh, you need to stay and you need to figure because only you know how much you can bear and how much you can deal with. So what my staying is going to, what my staying looks like is going to be different from what your staying looks like. You know, number one, always barring abuse. You know, if you are not safe, if you are in an abusive relationship, please find help. Please find a way to get out of that situation because nine out of 10, or at least I'll say eight out of 10 is just going to get worse. So with that being said, though, there are going to be things in your marriage that you're just like, oh, uh, uh, I can't, you know, but maybe you can. And it's about you working on it. Is it something that is so traumatic? And a lot of times at the time, it seems like it's so traumatic. But when you step back, you take a breather and you start looking at it. This is where the compassion comes in, looking at it from the other person's perspective other person's point of view put yourself in their shoes okay well let me see how they're looking at it before we just go unhinged and you know a lot of times we just oh forget that blah we go crazy but what's funny is that you're able to say that now because of course we're on the other side of it well i, I mean, think we're more mature i still want to elbow you <laughs> <laughs> i think we're more mature in our relationship because of the roller coaster ride that we've been on when i say roller coaster ride i mean we're well, not talking about the regular you get in and it's the wooden roller coaster. We're talking about the ones that go upside down, spinning all that. But here's the trick on, on the roller coaster we were on, you know, that thing that goes, you know, that, that little, that oh, the, the, the bar you that comes over your neck and all that. Oh, mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, you check it and you're like, okay, this thing, it, it's moving too much. Ours open while we were going upside down, <laughs> all that, but we held on to it. But not only you, you just said, D -d 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 it's like when you're first going up the first drop, you know, when you go up, how it tick, tick, oh, yeah, tick, it goes yeah. very slow up the first drop and then it just drops. We didn't go slow up the first drop. We just went up the first, it, we went like we were on the drop it already. the track and yeah. all that. It, so, I mean, and, and I, I can say that, like I said, I, I believe that we were fortunate because um, the Trump, the trauma of what we went through has been like no other trauma that, like I said before, I never know anyone who got stabbed especially in the heart by an ex. I've heard of the jealous type of stuff. I've heard of the, you know, the back and forth, baby mama drama, baby daddy drama, stuff like that, the arguing and, but never any type of um, the altercation that happened, like the near death type of, right. never heard of that, you know? And I, I'm, I'm a, I don't like drama. I've never been a drama, dramatic type of, where I want drama being drawn to me, but it came and it happened. And I say we we're fortunate because we were able to get past that. We were, I truly believe that we were meant to be together. And even while we were going through, while I was going through my breakdown of, I don't, I can't deal with this anymore. In the back of my head, the Lord was telling me, yes, you can. And I was like, nope, I cannot. And he kept saying, yes, you can. And Go ahead. No, so we're, and we're not unicorns. Don't think, oh, well, that's nice for you guys. Over the years, we've come to know other couples that have been through some pretty horrendous stuff as well. Mm -hmm. I won't say horrendous, some really challenging things and are still together. Because they... Anthony. 
the Santa Stevens. Oh yeah. So we, there's a couple that we want to get on um, the podcast and um, it's my mission to get them on this year to talk about high school sweethearts that went through, I'm not even gonna tell their story that went through a lot. No, oh, yeah. A still lot. Still together. Their still kids, together. you know, um, raised their kids, came from the same hood I came from, um, knew a lot of the same people. Um, and yet their kids went on to Ivy, Ivy league schools and, um, but they endured. Right. But that's the whole, yes, you can. Part, yeah. We're not know? a unicorn. It is possible, but it, I mean, it, it does take work and it's a matter of committing to that work. Again, going back to Inky, Inky Johnson has that quote. It says that staying committed to the process, the process of marriage is difficult and it's, it's caught up in the little things mm-hmm. and it's committing to those little things without being emotionally attached to the outcome. Meaning honestly, the outcome nowadays is what does it look like to everyone else? <laughs> yeah. Forget about how your relationship is being perceived by your auntie, by your grandma, by your neighbor, by your 6,000 friends on Instagram. <laughs> Stop all that. That's right. Because and be concerned about what it looks like for you, for you in your, your four walls yep. to your children. And what is it that you really, really want? What is it that you want? What do I want? It, this is what I, okay. So I'm going to work to get that. And I'm just be honest. If, if both of you agree, we're going to do the work, make the whole effort to do the work and not just be like, well, okay, I'll do it, but I don't, you, you can't go into it with a, well, I don't think it's going to work or I'm not, because if you can, what, what is that saying? Whether you think you can or whether you think you can't, you are absolutely right. So the mindset that you have for the small things, even the, the big challenges, do you think you can do it? Can I do this? I could do it. Okay. If you said you can, you can. You know, it's funny. It's uh, People make fun of these movies at times, but I, I think back to almost every one of the Tyler Perry movies. And <laughs> when there's some, fun of the movies. When there's some drama people. that's kicking off and there's always somebody, right, that's getting serious drama. That's just catching smoke from everybody. And they got people around them that are like, let's not forget that. Let's do this. But there's always one character that, that clears out all the smoke and focuses on that individual that's going through the trauma. And they, they say, what do you want to do? What do do you want to do? And it's at that point where the movie turns, you know, we're like, what do you want to do? What, what, let's focus on you, your needs. Where's your desire? Where have your prayers been taking you? What do you want to do? And when that person focuses on that individual, that's when everything changes. And then people rally for the most part. And that happens in real life. So, I mean, I guess the question is, in your life, who you're surrounding yourself with, going into the new year, all these changes we're talking about, trying to get to it you know, 24 years and beyond. If you're at year three and, and it's troubling and you're having difficulty, year one, if you're six months in to your marriage and you're like, oh my God, I don't know if I can do this. Who do you have around you? Mm-hmm. who has taken a moment to sit there and sit, instead of saying, you know, girl, I told you he was no good. Or, uh, you know, so these fellas are like, man, I told you, man, she ain't nothing about that. You should have stuck with us. And we got these, these girls. Who was taking the moment to say, yo, Hey, real talk. What do you want to do? What is your heart telling you? Have you prayed on it? What do you feel God is leading you? Mm-hmm. If you don't have somebody in your camp and your tribe, asking you those questions and then standing behind you and propping you up. Who's your Aaron for your Moses, right? Who's holding you up when you can no longer stand so that you can complete the task in front of you that God has put on you. Who was that individual? If you don't have that person, that's something you need in 2021. You want to get to, I mean, we're celebrating our 24 year marriage and we're talking about that. And yeah, there was some stuff we went through, but who is your Aaron? Who's that person that's going to sit there and stand by your side and, and, and encourage you in those moments where you feel inconsolable and get you through it? That's what you need to find in 2021. Everyone's talking about new year, new you, new year, new me, all that. Look. <laughs> new year, new tribe. New year, new tribe. Because your tribe is, <laughs> it's real. When, you're, when your mom and your daddy told you, show me your friends and I'll show you who you'll become, it's the truth. Mm-hmm. Same thing when it comes to your relationships. Show me the couples you hang around with and I'll show you what you'll become. I'll show you this, the, the height of the success you'll have in your relationship or I'll show you the lows that you're about to experience based on who you surround yourself with. 
you want 24 years, you want 25 years, you want 30? From what we've gathered the information from the anecdotal evidence that we've been able to witness over these years, both good and bad, you need a tribe, even if it's one other couple. Moses had his brother. All you need is that one couple to support you. You don't need 6,000 friends on, on Instagram <laughs> showing you what they look like in, you know, in 30 seconds in the right lighting. You need that person that knows what you look like when your hair is not done, your nails aren't done, when you haven't had a haircut or a shave in X amount of time, your breath stink, your body stinks. They know every single low that you have and they didn't run. They're still there for you. That's what you need in order to have that 24, that 30, that year two, making it to year five. All <laughs> Sometimes six months. <laughs> sometimes six months. Yeah. So, I mean, this was a kind of a fun podcast for us because we really wanted to just really celebrate our love, but celebrate our love for marriage as well. And our love for, for providing you with hopefully some breadcrumbs on, on how you to get to that next, to turn that next corner, whatever that may be, mm -hmm. you know, six months, one year, whatever. And we hope you're finding value in that. So again, focusing on the little things. I want us to actually focus on the I can can get like two for the road is what we do at the end of every single one of our podcasts. And we're carrying that over into 2021 where we select one of the affirmations. <laughs> Good Lord. That snooks makes all the noise in the world. I was trying to do it on beat. And with these affirmations, what you're able to do is just pick a little thing that you can focus on. So we've got a, a challenge that's going to be coming up in the, sometime this year that we're working on that involves some of these. What does yours say? I can encourage my partner to follow their dreams. Look at that. So you're going to be my Aaron? Yep. I'm going to be like, love, love you. Be quiet. <laughs> Let me talk. Mine says, I can listen intently Oh, when she's telling perfect. me to leave her alone. That is That works out perfect. And so and this is what we're going to focus on for the week. So each of you have that. So one of you needs to help the other focus on their dreams, and the other one needs to listen intently. So... <laughs> This is the point in our podcast, and we're going to continue this into 2021. We did it last year. Um, we always, at least on the audio version, observe eight minutes and 46 seconds of silence at the end of our podcast in the memory of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Philando Castile, and so many other names that we forget. And we want the silence, and we try not to say too many names only because there's there's countless names that are forgotten every single time. And someone always takes, you know. Um, takes heart to the, another person's name not right. being mentioned. So every, we all know people that need social justice. We all know that there's a need for social justice in our country, if not the world. And we ask that you take these eight minutes and 46 seconds of silence and think about what you can do, because it's about personal responsibility, what you can do to be a better citizen, to be a better husband. So before you jump into that, I just kind of want to say, you know, I the rise of the with COVID is is going back up and in in different states, but please be careful, be safe and be responsible hmm. um because families are losing family members and you know, sometimes it's, it's, it's based on, it can be carelessness or whatever. Um, COVID doesn't, you know, there's symptoms, but you don't know when you first contract it, con when you first get it. So be careful because you don't know that who you may infect or you may be the one infected or whatever, but just stay safe. It's, it's hard. The holidays were different for a lot of people and, you know, I, we, we all practice social distancing because we want to be able to get together again when it's safe to get together. I want to make sure that my family is alive for us to get together. So as hard as it is, you guys just stay safe and be careful. Yeah, that's real talk. I mean, I have a very close friend and I mentioned it once before that um, there was a grandchild that brought COVID into the family home. And as a result, um, they lost their grandfather within, I mean, a very short period of time. And it's directly related to what was brought into the home because they didn't take it serious or they they made 
an allowance for an individual because of the holidays and, um, and it costs them and it's reverberating throughout the entire family. And, you know, so it, it and it's, it's not the, it's not an isolated incident. You hear that story over happening and over. over and over and over and over again. So we care about you. We care about helping a million couples really elevate their marriage, their relationships. Um, but we also care about you, um, making sure you're keeping your family safe as well. Mm -hmm. So in this eight minutes, 46 seconds, think about what you can do to be a better citizen, a better family member, a better whatever in 2021. All right. So, hey, with that said, till the next time, be blessed. Bye-bye.